going. Hi, this is Teresa. And I promised a number of my friends and a number of people who have emailed me on my site how to fold large pieces of fabric. This happens to be silk. This caught a lot of people's attention. Let me drop it open here. And this was done with simply a folding technique. So I'm going to show you how to fold. I'll also make a mention of another technique, which I tried, but it sort of destroyed my fabric a little bit. It, it stretched it beyond what I wanted to do. So this is a large piece of silk. I don't know if you can get that whole thing in there. Stay back. And so what I've done is put a dye blanket on it. Let me back up a little so you can maybe see more of it. I do have a photo of it hanging in the line. This has been washed and dried, and um, my blanket was too small, but I did that on purpose so that I could have these very cool borders. So, what I'm going to use next, let me put this aside, this will be made into a garment. And when I start the folding technique, at some point, we may speed it up. So, this is my raw silk. It's already been mordanted. And I'm going to lay this down. It's 45 inches wide and 3 feet long, 72 inches. So my table is 6 feet. But it could be 4 feet. It really doesn't matter as long as this could fit on here. And I hang it over... The edge. I'm not going to get into dyes and things of that nature. This works with any dye blanket, whether you use a natural dye or a synthetic dye. First, let me show you, but I won't roll the whole thing. One of the methods I used learned and I thought oh this is very cool I'll be able to do all sorts of exciting things I can go out 15 feet it's wonderful didn't work for me so this is my bottom piece of fabric what's going to go on what's going to go on top of this are my leaves then on top of that will be my blanket. Now I don't want to put my blanket on here and that so I do the leaf. But this technique involves a wooden dowel and a hose that you would use for your like hot water hose. Pick it up from any of your home depot type stores. You would shove your dowel down this. different lengths of this. So this one I have a longer dowel, but I'm not using it. So I'm just going to show you. So basically, you do need to have the dowels coming out or you can't get them out. So I would be laying this down here, everything sandwiched together, and I would begin to do my roll. Okay? And you don't do this fast because you've got to tug, tug, tug. you got to make sure everything is secure. What I found, and this is what happened, we have this nice long piece after you roll it up, you take the dowel out. Now obviously, that's not going to fit in something like my poor roaster here. So you have to pull it around, tie it together, and put it in your steamer or your vat. What I found was when I began taking them out, this area here that bent so strongly uh, left little ripples and bubbles in there. And it wasn't obvious, so I went to iron my pieces. And since I'm making garments out of them, I couldn't have that. So I've kind of discarded this idea. But I'm not throwing away my rubber hoses and stuff because they may come in handy for something else. One day maybe I'll have something that long. That would be good. So. So my next step is going to be to put my leaves down. Because my blanket... When I pull it out, it will only come about this wide, it's 33 inches. I'm going to leave some of this here, but if I want my leaves to imprint on the edges, like the piece I showed you, 
they need to stick out further. So I'm lucky that I have three acres here that I can do all of that with. So I have some pecan leaves. I'm sorry about the rooster, but he lives here. So I'm going to come in here and go for a little distance. Notice we have the edge here. What I'm really going to be doing, and I'm not real concerned about a particular pattern here. I'm going to bring out stuff that I have. And in just a minute, I'll go into the blanket portion as we get that done. Okay, I have put my leaves down here, and you'll see that they're sticking out on the edge even though this is too small, purposely too small. So this is my dyed blanket. It's like a flannel wool or something. The thicker your blanket is, the more dye it's going to hold. So you, again, you can use any type of dye that you want. So I'm going to take this, lay it down like so. I'm not going to quite go over the edge because I need to use it. One thing I should point out, we're going to be folding over section by section and then when we roll we're going to be going in this direction consequently you don't want any like thick things on here because you can't roll in that direction so you just need to kind of keep that in mind most people when they do a blanket it covers the whole thing and I've done as many as four pieces together which, yeah, which is a marathon. Okay, here is where you're going to put some plastic down. If you don't put a barrier of some sort, then you're just going to get a solid piece of um, whatever color your dye blanket is. It's just not going, it's not going to leave those individual pieces that you want to see. So, oh, cricket. So here... And the barrier can be a lot of anything, but in my case, I'm going to use plastic for ease right now. I did some squid rolls. I'm sorry about the roosters. I have no control over that. They don't crow in the morning. They crow all the time. So this big one is kind of heavy. It rolls. Often I'll use something like this to roll. And I'm going to cover all the way to this end. pair of scissors and just trim it right on the edge okay I keep my plastic because every time you use it every time that you use it it gets a little bit stiffer and makes it actually easier it's not quite as fly away Okay, so in this case, I'm going to put in one more layer of plastic here because then I'm going to show you how I flip. And you notice that even though my bottom piece is hanging off, I've got this wadded up here so that I can keep using it. Remember, too... This is kind of governed by nature. This is not a digital imprint. So don't look for perfection. Enjoy doing it. I will tell you the big pieces tend to get a little bit physical. So you have to be, this is a good gym substitute. All right, here's my first. I am gonna flip this because I want it to fit in a specific size, I'm going to hold this, kind of hold your plastic down. I'm really more interested. Oh, by the way, let me point one other thing out. If you have 
an issue sometimes, you can take one of these little clips that you can get from Walmart and the office supply thing. You flip it right there because you're, you're pulling and stretching as you flip over one time. Now, I pull it back. Ta-da! I can unclip this. I'm bringing this blanket back. And I'm pulling. Perfect. Now, I'm going to continue putting some more leaves down. And you'll have to forgive me. I'm not really... Um, in the interest of time, what? All right, I've got my next row of these down. I'm going to pick up my blanket again, pull it over. Stop about right here. Straighten it out a little. Okay. I'm going to repeat what I did just a minute ago. And I'm only going to do one row and go underneath. By the way, I usually start, this is what the rolling pin is good for. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can just use one of your wooden dowels. Make sure this is over the edge, all the way out. Oops. Cut this. I guess I could roll from that one and you can see it better. Well, here we are. Because I've already started this. This one flipping over will be a little bit easier. And I like to bring this to cover to make sure the edges here are touching. If we don't, the world is not going to end. Yeah. I'm going to pull, I'm going to flip over. This is flipped over. I like to roll these out because it makes the creases a little bit easier when I flip them. Like, and I pull this again toward me. Every so often I like to look over and see just how much is left. There's a fair amount. back. Same thing, I'm going to put more of my leaves down. So come back in a second and I'll have my leaves down. I have folded all the way to the end. You'll always have a little bit of excess unless you're really good at doing this and I apparently am not. And I apologize for the sunglasses. I'm going blind out here with this reflective glare. So, the last thing that we're going to do, and I just continued and continued and continued pulling, pulling, and flipping, is put one last piece of plastic here. And again, if you want the pattern, you need to have a barrier of some sort. So, I actually have this 18 inch one. It works pretty good. It allows and you see how big this whole thing is now. I mean, a huge piece is down to something that's manageable. So here, I'll put my final piece. And I'm just going to roll this. And I should say, before I put this on here, I did take this and roll these edges down, okay? So here we go. Everything else was cut flush to this, but this is your top piece, and this is what's going to be... So you want to roll out about a foot to 18 inches beyond it. Go 
done something with my pen. And I'm gonna get here and kind of show you when I cut this, I want to pull off over there. And by the way, these are like one dollar scissors, so that's what they're used for. I do a lot of workshops and I tell all my students when you get at the end, you will love me when you understand all this. If you can't find the end of tape, you will never find the end of your barrier. So, make sure it falls flat. Okay, here we get into the bundling process. And this is more of a folding video to show you how to fold it. But when we bundle this, we're gonna do what you would anywhere else. We're gonna put some weights on here. I probably should have done it the other way so you could see. I can still do that. Hang on a minute. Everyone loves the story. Too. For those following the story of Tuppence, here she is keeping me company with a watchful eye. Okay. So here I'm going to use my wooden dowel. I'm going to pick this up and I will tell you, you need something heavy on it. I'm going to pull and roll, pull and roll. Every so often I'll get these little wrinkles here and I don't mind those because they don't affect the integrity of the fabric. Sort of good word in it. So by the time I get done rolling this, I'm going to have a wad of fabric. So pull, roll, doesn't matter about this so much. It's just, again, a barrier. So let me get to the end, and I'll show you what we're going to do. As you get up to your weights, you just move them back. And if I want to, I can pull the whole thing forward. Let's say I needed to sit down in a chair to do this. Some people do. Roll, tug. Some people go to the gym, pull, roll. This is kind of sticking, which affords a little bit of traction. So again, I'm gonna pull. And the reason for extending this is because as I go around, it picks up and helps cover what I didn't do. All right. Sometimes it doesn't go all the way around. In that case, I will actually pull out another piece of plastic. Like so. Lay this this way. Cut. Pull snug and continue right around. So, there we go. Almost looks like, and it's heavy. It's got to be six pounds. It's more than one of those five pound weights. So, okay. So this is wrapped. I use two rubber bands on the ends just to hold it down. I just make like a surgeon's knot here at the end. Do it again. And from here, I'm gonna start wrapping, which would be a technique of pulling, wrapping. I'm gonna put this on the floor, and then pulling up. I want to make sure, if you read any of my blogs, you'll know that one of the keys to eco printing is pressure. So you've got to make sure that there is contact. One of my blogs had an article that I did on one of the keys to eco printing, and that is contact. So you want to make sure that this big wad of fabric and a blanket everything is contacted 
So I am wrapping this, but I am simultaneously pulling tightly and going around again. I can put it off the table and do the same thing. A lot of people, and I'm gonna, I'll come back, I'll be going forward and backwards with this. I'm leaving a little bit here, you'll see why in a second. So let me wrap this and you'll see what I do next. So, when my trusty digital thermometer So I'm going to take my missile, check my temperature, and I'm going to put it in here. I actually have to heat this up. It didn't turn on. And come back in two and a half hours into this pot of water. I'm not steaming. I'm simmering this. But because it's so big, you have to account for the extra time. So we'll check it out in a little while. So here we have the bundle just out of the pot. Looks like a roast, doesn't it? I'm going to give it a few more minutes to cool down before I open it up and you can see the size of the original one.